Today we're going to be taking a look at the Kurt Folding and Tilting 5 Bike Rack. It's been designed for use in 2 inch hitches. Its part number is C18065. This Kurt Bike Rack is going to be the perfect solution for transporting just about any style of two wheeled bike that you've got. As you can see, the first thing that really stands out, pull the pin up here at the top, it's going to be our dual cradle arms. As you can see, they're nice and wide up here in the front. It's going to accommodate even the largest frame bike. And then they really taper down here in the back. This gives us a great opportunity to mount maybe a woman's frame bike, child's bikes, or even some of those hybrids or some of those other ones that don't have a lot of space between the seat down tube and our frontmost connection point. Here at the top, let's do a couple of quick measurements. We'll go from the outside of the bar to the outside of the bar. We've got about 14 inches here. And once we get down to our smaller taper, it's almost in half. It's now about seven and three quarters of an inch from the outside of that bar to the outside of that bar. Now with that pin I had pulled earlier, that easily allows us to move our rack up into position. We'll slide the pin through. and secure it on the other side with the attached half. Now, it's pretty tight right now. It's a brand new rack we just got out of the box. It's gonna loosen up a little bit over time. Another thing that we'll note while we're here, you're gonna have adjustable cradles. These cradles, we can move them in or out slightly. As you can see, it's not the easiest thing in the world to move the cradles, which is good. That's gonna prevent your bikes from sliding forward and back as you're heading down the road. Each cradle is going to have either a single strap or a dual strap, just depending on where our bike's oriented. The dual strap gives us our anti-sway cradle. So our down tube will come right up through here. And with this tight, it's really going to eliminate that swaying back and forth, which is going to help to prevent that bike to rack or maybe bike to bike contact as we're heading down the road. And then on each of our cradles, we're going to have the upper tube strap as well. And if you take a look right down the cradle itself, you see these little grooves, there's ridges in here, provides little grooves. Those are perfect for allowing our brake cables or our lines to fall right down in those grooves and keep them from getting scrunched. So everything's gonna work fine when we get where we're going. As you can see, each cradle arm is also gonna be equipped with a reflector right here on the end. That does a great job of alerting anybody walking or driving by that there's something off the back of our vehicle and just to use a little bit of caution. Another great feature of the Kurt Rack is that we're gonna be able to fold the center mast and arms out and away from our vehicles when we don't have our bikes loaded. To do that, we're just gonna loosen a little T-handle here, pull the clip and the pin located here in the base, and then we'll just lift up on the T-handle. And as you can see, that's gonna allow us to fold it out got a nice stopping point here so it's not going to overextend and in most cases that's going to give us all the room we need to open any kind of rear hatch or hatchback anything like that on your pickup trucks as the tailgate comes down it would probably offer a little bit of interference so check out our test fit section for some more information on that to raise it back up we're just going to lift the mast and we'll watch for this pin to fall back into its hole okay that's perfect there. We'll now take the attached pin, slide it right back through the hole it came out of. Try to keep a hold of our clip. We'll slide that in the other side here. That's gonna have our pin nice and secure, but you'll notice there's still some wiggle and there's still some movement to that mass. So that's when we tighten up the small black T-handle here with that secure, all that play, all that movement's gone. We're in a really nice setup, ready to head down the road once we get our bikes loaded up. Here on the back side of the mast, we've got a nice D loop that's going to stick out from the rack. This is going to allow us to pass through a strap or maybe a cable lock if we'd like to run that through the frames of our bike and keep everything nice and secure. Any kind of strap or cable lock will be sold separately. Here you're going to notice that Kurtz used a really nice manufacturing process. All of your edges and your seams here, those are going to be fully welded. 
We've got sturdy steel construction. As you can see, we've got nice widths on our plates, so they're gonna hold up for a long time. And they fully coated it with a black powder coat finish. That's gonna prevent any kind of flaking or corrosion for years to come. Now that we've gone over the features of the rack, let's take a look at how it's gonna install in the vehicle. We'll essentially just bring our shank of the rack, and we just need to slide it into the receiver tube of our hitch. If you take a look here, this is gonna have a solid welded in bar that goes across. This is fully threaded all the way through. So this is gonna give us the opportunity to insert our pin from the right hand side or from the left hand side. So let's just get that lined up. Then you'll see the anti-rattle bolt. This is gonna be provided. We can place this in from the right side, which I usually do on the Suburban here or from the left side, just depending on how your vehicle is set up. Like on the, in this case, we've got a seven pole cover over here. And a lot of the bolts don't wanna thread in, so it's nice having that option to do it on both sides. With that hand tight, we'll bring in our wrench and just tighten this on down. Now as we tighten this, it's gonna draw the shank of the rack right over against the receiver tube of the hitch here. You see, we're not gonna have any movement or any play, any noise to deal with. We'll then come right over here to the other side and we've got the included pin. That'll slide right up in the end of that bolt just as an extra level of security. As you can see, it's got a loop on there, all for easy removal. Now for loading our bikes, we'll just extend out our dual cradle arms. We'll just pull the pin that we saw earlier, rotate our arms up into position. As we do this, we line up our pin holes again here, and we're gonna slide the same pin on through. and secure it with the catch on the other side there. As you can see, the arms are gonna have a nice upswing to them. They're kind of angled up. This is gonna help keep these rear bikes higher up off the ground, giving us additional ground clearance. Now we wanna undo our cradle straps. And with our cradles exposed, we'll grab our bike. We'll place it right up onto our rack. We wanna make sure that we've got the down tube of the seat on the same side as the cradle that's got the double straps. We'll then just bring our straps up and over. Pull them right down on there to get a good, nice, firm hold on the bike. And then finally here at the rear, we'll want to do our anti-sway cradle. And we can always slide the bike up or the cradles are fully adjustable as we talked about. So we can kind of custom fit those into any of the nooks and the crannies that we might have there on the rear. As you can see it's nice and secure. We're ready to load up a couple more. Here on our test course, we'll start by going through the slalom. This is going to show us the side to side action. This simulates turning corners or evasively maneuvering. Once we get to the alternating speed bumps, we'll see the twisting action. This will simulate hitting a curb or a pothole or driving over uneven pavement. Once we get to the full speed bumps, we'll see the up and down action. This will be just like driving in and out of a parking lot, parking garage, or driveway. Now that we've taken a good look at the Kurt bike rack and we've seen how adaptable it is to fit many different styles of bike, that's going to complete today's look at part number C18065.